potatoes. By far the most popular root tuber. And the fourth most grown commercial crop in the entire world. And for some of us home growers, it's the quintessential backyard crop. Close cousins to both tomatoes and peppers, potatoes are in that large group of plants known as nightshades. Though they will flower and fruit, the leaves, stems, flowers, and that fruit are not edible. Instead, potatoes are grown for these tasty tubers. There's over 5,000 varieties of potatoes grown worldwide, all with roughly the same requirements though. Today, we'll look at growing the humble potato, all the way from planting to harvest and everything in between. Buckle up, because once you taste fresh homegrown potatoes right out of the garden, nothing else will do. Like we mentioned, potatoes are a nightshade in the Solanaceae family of plants, and virtually every domestic potato variety grown worldwide can be traced back to Peru and Bolivia, on the western side of South America. For growing, there's many different types and categories of potatoes. One popular way to classify them is their seasonal designation of when they're harvested. Early season, which takes 60 to 80 days to harvest, mid-season, which take around 80 to 95 days, and then the late season, which are up to 130 days. I do try to encourage you to grow different varieties to see what grows best in your climate and in your conditions. Potatoes are a heavy hitter, and they're considered a staple food and one of the world's most important food crops. Although they're comprised of roughly 80% water, potatoes are a rich source of vitamin B6, vitamin C, potassium, as well as fiber, protein, and carbohydrates. Around the world, over 350 million tons of potatoes are produced commercially each year, with China making up about 22% of that amount. Commercial production aside, nothing beats the stuff that comes out of your own garden. So let's get started. Just as one potato crop ends and we harvest those fabulous tubers, so begins a new one. You see, potatoes, even tiny ones like this, are one of those self-sufficient crops that literally grow from themselves. Brand new potato plants grow from specific locations on the potato tuber's skin, known as eyes. These eyes, also called rosettes, contain new leaf primordia as well as meristems, and they give rise to brand new individual independent potato plants. It's pretty amazing. The act of sprouting your potatoes to obtain new potato plants is a process known as chitting. It's actually how all potato crops are started. It's pretty easy, let me show you how. Beginning a month before you wanna plant your potatoes out in the garden, place your washed clean organic potatoes in a sunny windowsill or countertop. Within a week, you'll start to see little sprouts forming. And two to three weeks after that, you can actually plant them. Now, this process happens in the darkness as well, as many of you have probably already experienced. But chitting your potatoes in the light is much faster and much more reliable. Each eye represents a whole new plant. So a single potato can have three, four, five, or even more plants sprouting up. I cut mine apart into single specimens and plant accordingly. If the weather's warm enough with soil temperatures of 40 degrees Fahrenheit or higher, the potatoes can be planted right out in the garden. I tend to always start mine early, so I plant my young potatoes up into small pots first as a transitory step. Potatoes are a summer crop. They're usually planted in mid-spring. The plants themselves are still tropical. They need to be grown over summer. However, the potatoes that we harvest, well, they're pretty versatile. 
and they can be pulled up at multiple times of the year. And this is what confuses people into thinking that potatoes are a cold weather plant. They're not. Harvest times, which we'll get into later, run anywhere from 60 days to four months after planting. Obviously, this is going to cross multiple seasons in temperate regions, causing this confusion. The older plants and tubers can take the cold somewhat, so planting later in the summer for a fall harvest is not out of the question. To play it safe though, we're going to be planting in the spring for a summer harvest. Obviously, we've already done all that here, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's go back to when we first chitted these potatoes to get them ready for planting. Whether you're planting the newly chitted seed potatoes directly or the pre-potted plants, potatoes have specific requirements. They're a full sun plant needing at least six to eight hours of direct sun per day. They grow best in a sandy, well-drained neutral soil, but moisture is necessary, so organic matter is gonna be important. If you've got a sunny spot that freely drains excess water out in your garden, you can grow potatoes no problem. However, just because potatoes like sandy, well-drained conditions doesn't mean you can get away with a poor soil. One way to get around poor soils, but keeping that excellent drainage, is to build your own potato bed, which is what I've done here. This way, we can completely control our own soil mixture and, as you'll see coming up, facilitate the potato plant's unique growth habit. Potato plants are pretty low maintenance, essentially taking care of themselves if the conditions are right. But once or twice during early development, we help them along with a process known as hilling. You see, the tubers are what we're after, and while they do grow underground, they can often become exposed and turn green. This renders the potatoes inedible, and it's not desired. To control this, we pile on extra soil at the base of the potato plant about two to three weeks after the initial planting. And then we do it again about three to four weeks after that. This is not only gonna protect those surface potatoes, but also it's gonna give the plant more area to grow more potato tubers, thus greatly increasing our yields. So when you think about it, it's a double win. And that leads us back to our planter here. If you can make a bed where you can add height to one side, you could theoretically keep hilling as the plants grow. This keeps that hilled soil contained as well as the growing potatoes. Hey, let's go back four months to see how I put this all together. As always, measure twice, cut once. Building a potato bed doesn't have to be hard or elaborate or even expensive. In fact, this bed is going to be constructed entirely using reclaimed and scrap wood pieces. Two by fours make up the framework, while two by sixes and more two by fours mixed are gonna build up the sides. But even though it's scrap wood, pre-drill everything, especially when screwing in the ends. Without pre-drilled holes, even the best woods will split when screwing together the ends. For potato specific beds, it's nice to be able to add layers. Every time you want to hill your potatoes, simply add another layer or two to the bed and build the plants up. After a few years and iterations of designs, I discovered that if you orient the front of the bed to get the most sun, only one side needs to be removable and added to. So we can make three sides solid with an open front. After only 20 minutes, the bed was built and I placed it near my corn patch. Here, the plant should get upwards of 10 hours of sun per day. Perfect. For the final piece of the puzzle, I'll go ahead and add one or two more pieces to the front, and then the bed's finished. Notice how we left the bottom open though. This is gonna let the plant's roots escape and have access to more room. Open bottom raised beds are always the way to go. 
I do like to line the bottom of the beds though before putting in the soil. This way, it'll suppress any weeds or grasses from trying to spring up. Okay, finally I fill up the bed to the front level with some quality compost and soil. And to get it ready for planting on a hot day, let's go ahead and pre-soak that soil first to ensure our success. Okay, with the potatoes chitted and the bed constructed, it's time for planting. And planting potatoes is quite easy. Once your soil is warm enough, plant your seed potatoes or the pre-started plants at least a foot apart with the rows at least two to three feet apart. Potatoes are large plants. Try not to crowd them. The potato tubers tend to cluster around the base of each plant, but most certainly they'll branch up to eight inches or more outward. So give them the space. And just like tomatoes, plant them deep. Burying leaves in much of the stem is not gonna be a problem for these guys. Don't worry about it. The ones I have here were a bit lush and quite floppy. That's okay. I can just bury them even more to keep them upright. Easy stuff. We'll let these plants settle in, come back in a week or so, and really see the design of this bed in action. Well, less than a week later, and you can see how the potatoes have grown. When you look at how they've grown, essentially they've sprouted up like a vine tomato would. You see, planting potatoes isn't as neat and tidy as other plants, like say these peppers here. And with this next step in the process, it's about to get even messier. Like we mentioned before, early on in a potato's life, they're reburied up to two to three more times in a process we call hilling. So before we hill these guys, let me go ahead and put on three more rungs and I'll show you what I mean. Generally, every time the plant grows six inches or more, we hill them. On average, after the initial planting, that works out to hilling about three weeks later. Then again, about a month after that. Now, lots of people keep hilling after that, especially in warmer climates, but I find that twice is enough. Try to do it at least once though. It really does make a difference. Okay, with the potatoes planted and growing nicely, Let's talk some maintenance. Like we said, potatoes need to be well drained. There's no doubt about that, but they still need moisture. Growing in the summer with a tuber that's 80% water and with that lush foliage, these guys transpire like crazy. I'm watering my potato plants every three days, barring any rainfall. After the final hilling though, a nice mulch layer can really help to keep that soil moist and drastically reduce the need to water. Just like with all our other crops, mulch is never a bad thing. Aside from water, as you may have guessed, our potato plants are also going to need some food. Amending the soil around your potato plants with compost is great, especially if you make your own, and it might be all you need. But if you do think they need a boost, potatoes are fed once a month. For the first month, we use a high nitrogen fertilizer to promote growth. Then, in the second and third months, we'll switch to a balanced blend to support the growth of the tubers. Regardless of what fertilizer you pick though, you need to stop feeding at least two weeks before the harvest. And hey, speaking of that harvest, I think it's time to start digging. Potatoes are a unique crop in that they can be harvested at two different times. and Oddly enough, it's dictated by what's going on above the ground. Regardless of variety, most potatoes can be harvested in two different stages. New or baby potatoes and mature or storage potatoes. And like we said, it's the flowers or foliage that dictate when either or occur. Let me explain. Midway through the potato's life cycle, it's gonna flower. Usually white, medium to small, insignificant flowers that only last a few days. Two weeks after this flowering is normally the time to harvest your first baby spuds. New potatoes are small, and as you may have guessed, are generally eaten right away. A month to six weeks later, 
the foliage of the potato plant begins to die. It's right around this time that the larger, more mature storage potatoes are ready for harvest. It's why this potato plant here looks so haggard. Just like your garlic, storage potatoes are ready to harvest when the plants look their worst. And if you planted late in the season, this can happen well into fall frost without any harm to the actual potatoes. No matter what stage you're digging up the potatoes, be gentle with the harvest. Any damaged potatoes are not going to be able to be stored at all. Like a lot of root crops, but especially with potatoes, you never know what you're going to get, good or bad. So let's go ahead, take this bed apart and see what we got. As mentioned, potatoes are harvested at two different times. Early on for new or baby potatoes, and then later on when the plant dies off for storage potatoes. After four months, I'm shooting for storage potatoes here, but you never know what you're gonna get until you dig it up. I'm gonna remove all the foliage first to make digging much easier. There's actually two different varieties that I planted in here. Alta Rose, which is a small red, and Kennebec Gold. Because potato growing is purely vegetative, cross-pollination and breeding of the plants is never a concern. You can grow as many varieties of potatoes together as you want. The Alta Rose are small, but they actually store pretty well, which is nice because reds normally don't. On the other hand, Kennebecs are a great medium-sized potato, perfect for mashed, smashed, or especially french fries. It's quite thin skin though, so max storage is usually around three months that I've found, at least for me. I try to dig up my potatoes by hand because once you damage a potato skin, that's it. It's still edible, yes, but it can never be stored. This bed was only three feet long by one foot wide, so I only had three plants growing in it. I ended up harvesting 44 potatoes weighing just over 13 pounds for an average potato weight of 134 grams. At $2.99 a pound for organic potatoes, this was worth around 40 bucks. Now, if I didn't hill the potatoes so diligently, I would have expected about half this harvest. If you're trying to preserve your mature or storage potatoes, keep them in a dry, cool, shaded place, single file, for a minimum of two weeks. This curing process is necessary for the potatoes to develop that armor-like skin. They need that skin for the long-term storage. After they're completely dry, brush off any loose soil and store them in a cool, dark location for up to several months. Although the storage of potatoes is pretty easy and straightforward, there's three things you should never do. Don't ever wash your potatoes unless it's time to cook them. Don't store them in airtight containers or bags and keep them away from light and heat. Whew, that was a lot of potato info. Anytime we cover an important crop like this from planting all the way to harvest, I think it's really beneficial if we do a quick recap to reinforce the main points. Potatoes are one of the most important root crops grown worldwide. Unlike our other veggies, however, they aren't grown from seed. Instead, we plant vegetative offshoots that sprout up on the skin of the very potato tubers we eat. Normally planted in the spring, potatoes are a large crop that need their space at least a foot apart between plants and two feet between rows. Like their cousins the tomato, potatoes get planted deep. But further to that, they're also reburied up to two to three more times in a process known as hilling. When exposed to sunlight, potatoes become green and inedible. So hilling is necessary to protect the harvest. Speaking of hilling in that soil, 
Potatoes need a rich, but somewhat sandy, well-drained mixture. They'll absolutely not tolerate standing water, even less so than most of our crops. Full sun for at least six to eight hours per day, and your potatoes are gonna be nice and happy. Moving along to harvest, potatoes are a unique plant in that they can be harvested at two different times. Once, right after flowering for new or baby potatoes, or later on, right after the plant dies off for mature or storage potatoes. Expect anywhere from six to 15 potatoes per plant and save some of them back to start the process all over again. Potatoes are really easy to grow, in addition to being generously abundant. With just a few rules to follow, even new growers can find instant success with this root staple. Hopefully using the methods and strategies that we covered here today, I've set you on the path to your best potato harvest yet. Hey, happy growing guys. Hey, thanks so much for watching guys. I appreciate the support more than you know. And if you're getting value from these videos, please like and share them to spread the word and help your fellow gardener to grow better.